Hi friends, it's Julie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my top books of 2018 for you guys. So in 2018, I managed to finish 52 books, which I'm really kind of surprised about actually, seeing as how I packed up my house and moved twice in like four months. We sold a house. We just had so many big things that happened this year, but I still managed to finish 52 books. And the reason why I think I was able to finish that many was because I listened to 23 audiobooks last year, which I find kind of crazy actually because I'd never listened to an audiobook before last year, but they've completely changed my reading life. Like I constantly have one going now. I'm not a big podcast person, so instead I listen to audiobooks. So like when I'm cleaning or making dinner or folding laundry or driving in the car by myself, which doesn't happen a lot, but I constantly just have one going and I get through so many more books this way. Uh, but I managed to narrow all my books down to my top seven, and these are in no particular order, but let's just gush about some books. Well, I'm going to gush about some books. So to start things off, I want to talk about Robin Hobb, because you guys know that Robin Hobb is one of my all-time favorite authors, and I read three books by her last year. And while I absolutely love the Lives of Trader trilogy, my favorite book of hers that I read last year has got to be Fool's Errand, which is book one in her Tawny Man trilogy. This book was just pretty much everything that I could have wanted in this book. It just made my heart so warm. Reading about these characters again, Fitz and the Fool, it really just felt like coming home. You know that feeling that you get for all you Harry Potter lovers out there when you reread Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and it just gives you all of that, just those really good feelings? That's what this book did for me. However, there was something that happened in this book that absolutely devastated me, which like, like I'm talking like devastate, like curl up in a ball on the bed and just sob. I had tried to prepare myself for it because I knew it was going to happen, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't prepare. Uh, but I've heard this book described as a love letter to Farseer fans, and I can't agree with that statement more. It was honestly just everything I could have wanted in this book. I mean, I loved Farseer, but we all can admit if you've read it that it has some issues. It definitely has some pacing issues. It wasn't perfect, but you fall in love with those characters. And so going to Tawny Man and getting to read this beautiful, beautiful story about Fitz and the Fool, yeah, it was just everything I could have possibly wanted. Now moving on to my next book is probably no surprise, and that is Tin Man by Sarah Winman. You guys might remember that I read this book over the summer, and I loved it. It was just it was so beautiful. Sarah Winman's writing is just absolutely incredible. Well, I say that in this book. I haven't read any of her others yet, but I do plan to. But I gushed about this book over the summer when I finished it. And it was kind of surprising, actually, because I almost DNF'd this book. I just really wasn't feeling it at the beginning. I think I had too many books going on at one time. But once I finally sat down and really invested some time into it, I read the second half in one sitting. And it's a pretty small book but it was just absolutely incredible. So this is a story of two men, Ellis and Michael, and they meet when they're young boys, they quickly become best friends, and eventually that relationship starts to turn into something more than just friendship. But during the time when this book is set, I believe it's set in the 60s, I could be completely wrong, at least like in the beginning, I could be wrong there, it's been a while since I've read it, but it was during the time when being in an openly gay relationship just wasn't something that people did, and so Ellis and Michael could never really find a time to be together and eventually Ellis goes on to get married to a woman named Annie and the three of them become very good friends and at the beginning of this book you find out that Annie has died in an accident that isn't a spoiler you find out really early on and Ellis is just like stuck in this rut he can't get past it and so the first half of the book is told from Ellis's perspective and the second half is told from Michael's and oh, this book just absolutely devastated me like I sobbed through the whole like second half of this book I'm a really emotional reader but this book was just devastating but it was also so heartwarming and hopeful at the same time I absolutely loved it I plan on rereading it this year and I think I'll listen to the audio version because I've heard it's good and that way it gives me a new new way to experience the book now the next book I want to talk about is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. And this was another book that just completely blew me away. I, now I fully understand the hype surrounding Madeline Miller. She is just a master with words. This book was absolutely incredible. So this is a story of Achilles, but it's told from the perspective of Patroclus, or Patroclus, however you pronounce that. And we follow them as like young boys and as they meet and as they become friends and fall in love and then go off into the Trojan War. and then. We all know how that happens, but 
Madeline Miller has so much knowledge when it comes to like Greek history and Greek mythology. I think she majored in it in college, but man, you can just really tell and I just loved this retelling. Now I will say it is a pretty slow burning book. I mean, it's more of like a character study. There isn't a ton of action until like the very end, but I was just there for it. Like I listened to this on audio and the audio book is really good. It's super short and I was just immediately sucked in. Like I didn't want to do anything else but listen to this book and it was absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to read Circe this year because I hear more people actually prefer Circe over this one, which I find really hard to believe, but I'm super excited to read it and I hope Madeline Miller just keeps writing, keeps writing these Greek mythology like retellings because I loved this. Now moving on to my favorite nonfiction read, which is actually my favorite audiobook as well, and that is A Mother's Reckoning by Sue Klebold. This is another book I've talked about a few times on my channel, but I just can't forget this. It has stuck with me all year long, and I think finishing it around the anniversary of Columbine really added to that experience. I don't think that there's ever an April 20th that will go by anymore that I don't think about what happened that day and how hard that day must be for Sue. And I've heard mixed reviews on this book. I know that a lot of people don't really connect with her or, you know, they feel like maybe she made excuses for Dylan and I didn't get that vibe at all listening to this book. I think Sue does an amazing job delivering it. She never once makes excuses for what her son did. And she just talks about, you know, that day and the days leading up to Columbine and then the aftermath of that. And sorry, in case you don't know, Sue Klebold is the mother of Dylan Klebold, who was one of the shooters in Columbine. And, you know, I was talked about timing, you know, reading this book right around the anniversary. I also read this book, you know, toward the beginning of the year of 2018. And I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a lot of school shoot shootings happening at the beginning of 2018. And, and I just don't understand what's going on. Like having two little girls who are now in school and you know they have to practice lockdown drills at school now they have to prepare if a shooter was to come into their school and it's just so scary as a parent and yeah i just i absolutely loved this i think that i do recommend the audio version if you're going to pick it up because sue narrates it herself and she just does an incredible job she's such a strong woman and i don't think that i don't think i could ever probably do what she did by sharing her story yeah, just so good. Now moving on to my two biggest surprises from this year. The first one is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. I actually just finished this book in December and it completely blew me away. I was not expecting to love this book as much as I did. It was just, it was so, so good or else it wouldn't be on this list. So this is a story about a small town called Bear Town and it's a hockey town. Like hockey is like the life and blood of this town. And the year that this book is taking place, the hockey team has a chance to like go on and like win it all they're gonna win they're projected to win like the national championship and everyone thinks that this is going to be really good for bear town because bear town is really struggling financially people are moving there isn't a lot of growth or income coming in and so everyone is really counting on this hockey team to change everything for them and on the day of one of the big playoff games one of the star hockey players is accused of sexual assault and hauled off the bus and taken to jail and the town just really kind of spirals spirals out of control after that. Some people rally behind the hockey player, some people rally behind the victim, and it was just very interesting to see how this town dealt with this issue. And there were just so many things that I really loved about this. Number one was the characters. So different parts of chapters are told from different characters' perspectives, like different people in the town. And that may seem confusing, but I listened to this on audio and it wasn't confusing at all because it was just done so well. And at the beginning, all of the characters seem very superficial, but over the course of the book, Bachman just peels back these layers on these characters and you get to know them all. You get to care about them and you see some of their backstory. And it was just really incredible how he did this for not just the main characters, but the side characters as well. Like I was so invested in these, in these people and in this town and I cared about what was going to happen to them. And another thing that I thought he did really well was the way he handled the sexual assault. Like the way that the parents particularly handled it, like of the victim and of the accused, like the things that they said and they did, I just felt like it was so real. Like it actually happened just because they would say things and I was like, that, that's exactly what I would say or I would do if this happened to my daughter. Like it was, oh, excuse me, it was just 
absolutely incredible the way that he did it and yeah I just love this I can't wait to continue on with this series I've heard that the next book isn't as good as this one but at this point like I care so much about these characters that I just want to get back to them and see you know see what they see what happened to them after after the story took place now my next biggest surprise is definitely All the Ugly Wonderful Things by Brent Greenwood. This was a book that I, I didn't plan on reading. I really had no desire to read it, but we ended up picking it up for my book club and I am so glad that I did. You know, reading the synopsis of this book, I went into it expecting Lolita or something similar to Lolita and I could not stomach that book when I read it. I think I read it last year. You know, being a mother of two, two little girls, that book was just too much for me. I think if I would have read it at a different part of my life, I may have felt differently, but that book was just way too much for me. And so going into this one, I knew that it was a story about an older man and a younger girl, but these two stories could not have been more different. Like in Lolita, he searches out Lolita because she is a prepubescent girl and that's what he's attracted to. In this book, it is not that at all. It's a very gray area book and I think that's why I love it so much because gray area books are just more real to me. And so this is a story about this young girl named Wavy and her parents are drug dealers and they just very much neglect her. She has no one to take care of her. No one makes sure that she's eating. No one makes sure that she goes to school. No one makes sure that she has clothes. Just nothing. Like she's just on her own. And one day she meets this man named Kellen when he gets into a motorcycle accident outside of her house. And Kellen actually works for her father. And Kellen quickly finds out, you know, that no one is taking care of Wavy, you know. And so Kellen kind of takes it upon himself that he's going he's gonna to look out for her and he's going to take care of her. And so he makes sure that she gets food. He takes her to school, you know, he buys her new things. And they just quickly become very good friends. And as Wavy starts to get older, that friendship starts to turn into a really deep, true love for each other. And their story is just full of so much heartache, but also hopefulness. This was one of those books that when I finished it, I just held it and I just was like, oh my gosh, I love this book so much. Like that's the feeling that it gave me when I finished it. And I can't wait to read more of Bryn Greenwood's book. She actually has a new book coming out this year about a woman set, and it's set in Kansas. And fun fact, Bryn Greenwood is actually from Lawrence, Kansas, which is where my husband and I met. It's like 10 minutes from where I grew up. So I spent a lot of time in Lawrence. And yeah, my brother-in-law actually took a writing course by her and stuff, so just really cool. I would love to meet her one day, like at a book signing or something, but yeah, I can't wait to read more of her books. Like I absolutely love this one. Her writing was just absolutely incredible. And then the final book I wanna talk about is Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. And I know that I just talked about this book, what was it, in my last video, because I had just finished it, but I absolutely loved this. You know like when you find a new author and you just want to read every single thing that they've ever written and they have a whole backlist of books that's how excited i am about juliet and really i loved daughter of the forest so much and originally i thought this was just a trilogy but it's a whole series and she has so many other series that she's written i actually just bought the first in a biking duology that she has i found it at a used bookstore and just, I guarantee that you're going to be hearing a lot about Juliet Marillier this year as I kind of work my way through her books, but her writing style is just perfect for me. It's so beautiful and a little bit flowery and whimsical. I just, it's just magical. I don't know. I can't, I can't find the right words to describe it, but it's like my favorite type of writing and it's so character driven. And yes, you guys will be hearing a lot about Juliet Marillier this year because I plan on reading so many of her books. But those are all my favorite books from this year. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what your favorite book was or if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. But I think that's it for the day, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again very soon. Happy reading. Bye.